What do clouds have to do with chocolate? How is mozzarella cheese like a balloon? Hi, I'm Cole, and I can answer riddles like this using science and cooking. I'm going to make some dishes using ingredients that would seem more at home in a lab than a kitchen, like liquid nitrogen. This type of cooking is called molecular gastronomy. It's about taking into account the physics and chemistry of how ingredients and processes interact and figuring out new ingredients and new ways to prepare food. Now it's time to make the chocolate cloud. Now, very important when making a chocolate cloud, chocolate milk. Now we're also going to use some guar gum and some xanthan gum. To activate these ingredients, I heat the chocolate milk to 70 degrees before I add them in. Now what I'm gonna do next is take a spoon, just like so, and form a nice little cloud. Then straight into the liquid nitrogen. And there we have it, a chocolate milk cloud. I use xanthan and guar gum because they have special properties that make sure that the texture of my chocolate cloud has lots of air through it and stays thick and even. And by using liquid nitrogen, which is at 196 degrees below zero, the temperature of the cloud can drop really fast so that the outside freezes while the inside stays soft. Now, let's make a sponge cake with a difference. I'll flavor it with ingredients you might use on your toast for breakfast. Now, let's make our basic sponge recipe. Now that we've got our sponge mix, it's into the creaming canister. Now we want to add as much air as we can to this mixture. But it's not actually air, nitrous oxide. And that's achieved just like that. We release a small amount of nitrous oxide into the whipping canister, and it expands quickly to create air bubbles in the batter. The extra eggs make the mixture more stable and able to hold the extra large bubbles of air. After 30 seconds in the microwave, I have a light and fluffy sponge cake. Now, let's blow up a balloon, but not the sort of balloon you'd see at a party. This balloon will be made of cheese. Now that we've brought our cheese to 72 degrees, it's become quite elastic. And we're ready for our balloons. And here comes the fun bit. Inside here, we have a thick tomato soup. And around the nozzle goes our mozzarella. Squeeze it just like a balloon. And inflate. Heating the cheese to the right temperature causes the proteins, which are usually all bundled up in complex shapes, to denature or simply stretch out. This is what makes the cheese stretchy enough to make a balloon. So what's the point of blowing up a cheese balloon? Well, mainly because it's a lot of fun. But it does go to show that food and science have a pretty bright future together. Ah, science and food. It's amazing, isn't it? Now I've decided on pear as my first toast spread and well, 